Hello everyone, welcome again to our our new, um, uh, well new, our uh, C CPD in 43 series from SIAT Wessex, Wales and Wessex. Um, we've actually partnered with our um, uh, committee in the Wales region to bring you uh, Martin Randall from Extratherm, who will be um, uh, giving us a RIBA and CIT approved um, CPD on designing to zero carbon regulations, future home standards and the RIBA climate challenge of 2030. Um, so we've got that coming up just shortly and there's a couple of events that I want you to put in the diary moving forward is we've got new lock roofing system which again is with um, uh, our committee uh, a joint committee arranged event which is for site Wales and Wessex which is new lock roofing system slate roofing ceramic tiles and solar inserts which should be really interesting and then after that that's on the 7th of July sorry and then after that we've got another event on the 14th of July which is brought to you by site site Wessex which would be new to and waterproofing, some modern forms of structural waterproofing. As many of you know, it's a really, really interesting and difficult to design uh, underground for various reasons. Um, so that'd be a, a good one to attend also. Um, so what I'll, what I'll do now is I'll hand it straight over to Martin, who will take you through um, the CPD and we'll come back as usual um, just before um, quarter two to do a quick Q&A session. Um, so please do, as the talk's going through, please do um, ask any questions in the chat box and we will field those uh, towards the end of the event. Um, just to highlight which Martin will, is that you can obtain a, a CPD certificate for this. You'll need to contact Martin directly um, for that and he's more than happy to oblige. So thank you for doing the talk today, Martin, and I'm gonna hand it straight over to you. No problems. Brilliant. So hopefully you can you can see my screen. Is that is that correct? Yeah, I can see it. Brilliant stuff. OK, well, again, thank you. Thank you to everyone for, uh, for attending. So we're just going to go through designing to zero carbon, the regulations, the future home standards and the Revit climate challenge. And, and the main purpose of the presentation is, is pretty much looking at the part of regulations how it will be amended for 2022 uh, implementation and acting as a stepping stone uh, towards the future revisions and the introduction of the future home standards. Um, following this, we're going we're gonna to have a quick look at operational energy, looking at the Rebut Climate Challenge and, and where embodied carbon of materials uh, are being targeted to come into that as well. So just to give a, a brief introduction to Extratherm themselves, so we're a leading European manufacturer of PIR, phenolic foam, EPS, we're providers of Extravit, Stonewall and EPS, so that's established in 1986, where the company employs over 350 people and we operate at a two state-of-the-art facilities, um, servicing the UK at Chesterfield in Derbyshire and then our head office is in Navan in Ireland. So, uh, I was just explaining to the guys before we've uh, announced yesterday that we've agreed a uh, contract in principle uh, for the acquisition of Bally Firm as well, um, which will grow um, the market share um, in the UK and Ireland um, significantly. So just uh, an overview then, uh, we're going to look at the government's recent announcements on Part L 2021, uh, the consultation and its part in a stepping stone towards the future home standards. So I must say that that government announcement based on the consultation is on the England one, uh, so I will cover off uh, not in slides necessarily, but I will cover off some of the stuff in Wales as far as the consultation goes uh, during the process. We're going to look at the timetable for implementation of the Part L and the Future Home Standards. Uh, we'll look at the commitment, well, the government's commitment to a fabric first approach. Um, we can do a quick comparison of England on Wales on that one as well. Um, just a shame uh, England slightly. We'll look at the building regulations, specifications, being part of a stepping stone towards the Future Home Standards. And again, we'll be looking at the compliance specification there. We'll just look at the, the role and target for embodied carbon within the Rebut Climate Challenge, have a quick comparison, uh, quickly look at where, where we've gone um, to, to present, and then I'll, I'll draw that with a conclusion uh, before any uh, Q&A. So being part of a, an approved presentation, we've got the uh, reference material here for government uh, publications. So again, if, if anyone wants to, to have a copy of the presentation, this will be within it, and you can see where the information has, has been gathered. So in, in January uh, of, of this year, Chris Pincher announced uh, his or the government's response to the consultation on the future home standards. Uh, and within that, it sets out the government's plans for the changes to Part L, which is energy, and Part F, ventilation, to 
um, enable the introduction of future home standards to achieve uh, nearly zero energy performance. So it goes on to state that improving the energy performance of buildings is vital to achieving net zero emissions by 2050 and protecting the environment for future generations to come. The radical new standards announced today will not only improve the energy efficiency of the existing homes and other buildings, but will also ensure that new homes are fit for the future by reducing emissions from new homes by at least 75%. So they're going to do that with high levels of energy efficiency, um, low carbon heating systems. So again, it's pretty much certain that they're going to ban fossil fuel uh, from a heating point of view, gas, oil, uh, LPG uh, use from 2025 and being zero, zero carbon ready by 2025. So again, looking at the timetable, so again, consultation has, has come out. Uh, by the end of the year, we'll have the documents themselves uh, with an implementation for June 2022. Um, there is on, ongoing um, technical work being done by the Building Regulations Advisory Committee and others, um, basically putting together the same sort of program and timetable um, for achieving the future home standards in, in 2025. And hopefully, um, you know, this, this has been slightly delayed, um, the, the Welsh uh, regulations are, are still further delayed, but we've had a lot to contend with, COVID um, being the main factor, and, and then Brexit was an influence as well. So hopefully they can, they can deliver this on time. So apart from um, changes to the regulations and energy performance, the government also plans uh, to include measures to tackle ventilation. So a new requirement for additional ventilation and air, indoor air quality. Um, overheating, a uh, big, big problem in, in not only commercial buildings, but residential buildings as well. Um, a new overheating mitigation requirement uh, in the building regulations. So transitional arra arrangements. So again, um, there, there will be a 12 months transitional period. Um, so from June 2022, um, and typically you would, you would register your site, make an active start. I suppose that makes, or I don't suppose it definitely makes your planning extent. Um, so you, you do it for that reason and then to, to see what building regulations you're going to be governed under for that project. So a little example of, of this transitional arrangement is um, you have 100 houses and you, you register and make a start on those 100 houses in May uh, 2022. So you come under the 2013 or I suppose if, if Welsh, if the Welsh should drop the same thing, a 2014 regulation. So you have 12 months as a transitional period. So if you were to start, make an active start on 50 of those, and again, I'm just using uh, easy numbers and, as an example, but you come to the end of that 12 months transitional period um, in 2023, effectively, if you haven't made an active start on those 50 properties, they would then come under the 2021 regulations. So it is something that, that needs to be considered, certainly on the larger mast sites, um, can, can be a problem um, with planning and stuff taking so long as well. So it is something that should be considered, but it also offers the, the homeowner, um, certainly from the nationals um, who, are, who are selling and building the majority of the houses in the country, it offers them really what is a, a new house. So it's not new bricks and mortar, it's new technology, new regulations. So I, I really do see it as a good thing for them. Non-domestic buildings, a consultation on higher performance targets for non-domestic buildings, which will mean they'll be zero carbon ready by 2025. Existing homes will also be subject to higher standards with a significant improvement on the uh, standards for extensions, making homes warmer and reducing bills. The requirement for replacement repairs and parts to be more energy efficient, and this includes the replacement of windows and uh, building services such as heat pumps, cooling systems and fixed lighting. So by not making existing homes and the standards for them under part um, L1B, not making them higher, you're just going to create yourself more of a problem with what the government has committed to for 2050. So decarbonising the houses, um, they need they need better backstops, if you like. So it, it was muted by the government in their original consultation that um, they were going to do away with the, the fabric energy efficiency, um, the fees, um, and that, that would have led potentially to, to compliance purely with renewables. So hitting all the backstops and then allowing renewables to, to make that building pass. And again, there's 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 some pretty big issues with that. Um, I've got no axe to grind with renewables, and and, and they are needed for the future. Um, but if you have a situation where you have four kilowatt, six kilowatt of PV on your house, which which breaks down over time, and we'll cover that with some embodied carbon side of things with PV panels in a minute, then that, that breaks down. Can the homeowner um, afford to, to 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 renew that? Can they afford to fix to pay it? Because it's quite clear that they do have a life expectancy. Um, 
And, and the answer to that probably a lot of the time is no, and not at the time, in which case you're putting the, the onerous on them and, and the building sort of no longer sets out as it should do um, in its performance. So they have um, decided after lobbying to retain that fabric energy efficiency standard. Um, so, you know, from, from our point of view and, and the homeowner's point of view, that's really great. So looking at the table A there, the draft future home specification, so 2025, you've got the floor looking at 0.11, um, so 150 mil PII, PIR high floor, typically in block and beam, ground bearing slab, they do make a slight difference, but based on a PA of around about 0.4 will give you a, a U value around about 0.11. The external wall U value at 0.15, so again, can be done in a, in a number of ways, but looking at a partial fill um, CWP uh, 100 mil, 50 mil cavity, so no more than 150 mil overall, uh, and a lightweight block, you can get 0.15. Um, or if you're in an area where you can use full fill, we've got a full fill PIR in cavity therm, um, where again, 125 mil overall with 125 mil cavity therm built in system, um, you'll achieve 0.15. Roofs, 0.11, so again, the majority of the roofs, I suppose, we look at uh, are along the ceiling line, plain roofs. So again, that's around about 400 mil of mineral fibre. I have my own opinions on, on insulation through the bottom cords of ceiling joists and not utilising what, what potentially is a good amount of loft space. Um, it, ha it has a value to it, which far outweighs the value in, in making it a warm roof. Um, and, it, and it makes it fit for the future. It's, it's future-proofing a, a loft space whilst allowing more storage effectively in loft storage um, that can be utilised because we don't design enough um, storage into the large majority of our houses. Uh, looking at windows at 0.8, so that's, that's triple glazing, um, which, which is all well and good, but adds additional embodied carbon. Uh, door U values at one, air permeability, so air permeability at five remains, remains constant. The heating appliance, they're looking at low carbon heating, so pretty much air source heat pumps, um, be it ground source heat pumps, can be used subject to ground conditions and space. Um, ventilation system, so keeping them standard, wet rooms, uh, WCs, bathrooms, en suites, um, we ventilate uh, fans in. And then PV, uh, so no PV, um, and that's the general notional dwelling compliance at the moment for the future home standards. So looking at the details, um, and, and the, the, the stepping stone, I guess, so to the future home standards. So again, future homes publication by the end of the year, implementation by June 2022. And then there's, they're looking at four performance metrics uh, to be used. So you've got the primary energy target, the CO2 emissions target, the fabric energy efficiency target, and the minimum standards for fabrics and fixed building services. So we're now going to look at them uh, individually in the next slides. So the primary energy target, um, so, oh, sorry, primary energy rate is the primary energy used by the dwelling for heating, lighting and hot water. The heating is influenced by the building's fabric performance. So other factors uh, like boiler efficiencies and renewable inputs, et cetera, are also used. So CO2 emission targets. So this, this measure um, has been with us in SAP from the concept as a metric to, for compliance. Um, and we accept that the reduction in CO2 is the primary objective on improving our building stock as it contributes massively towards global warming. So this target will be uh, for a minimum standard for CO2 emissions uh, from the dwelling. And it, it is and has been with us um, from the start. I mean, it looks at the CO2 emissions of a notional building uh, of the same size and shape of the proposed building itself. So the, the target fabric energy efficiency, what they muted uh, to remove, and it must be said that in Wales they don't have they don't have this, but their the backstops are far lower. Uh, is the target fabric energy efficiency rate in in essence uh, this relates to the fabric first approach that is commonly accepted as the starting point for all steps towards energy efficiency. So the more efficient a fabric is, the less uh, energy will be used to heat it, and it reduces fuel consumption. Um, whether that energy is coming from a clean or, or not so clean source, it has to be paid for by, by the homeowner um, or, or consumer. Um, the less fuel is used, the cheaper the home is run, and it's a major step in the elimination of fuel poverty. And that, now we've got uh, the minimum standards for the fixed building services and backstops. Um, so again, just, just quickly looking at uh, the roofs at 0.16. Uh, walls at 0.26, floors at 0.18, party wall at 0.2, swimming pool basin at 0.25, uh, windows at 1.6, uh, 
roof lights at 2.2, doors at 1.6, and air permeability uh, at 8. So the, the, these are a backstop, and they're designed for difficult to treat areas. If you set out to achieve all your backstops, you could, you're going to make compliance very, very challenging. Um, you'll certainly um, struggle uh, to achieve your fees, um, but it'll also mean that a lot of money is spent elsewhere for compliance. So you, you will struggle. So it, it's worth just, just mentioning um, Wales um, and, and what their proposals are for backstops. So if you look at the floor, um, they're looking at 0.15, uh, the heat loss for walls at 0.18, heat loss in roofs at 0.13, and then windows at door, doors at 1.4. So they do, they do things significantly differently um, because they don't have the fees, but their backstops are a lot lower um, and they do really um, target the, the fabric first approach. So going on to look at the uh, the 2021 regulations there, just, just down on the notional dwelling. So we're looking at double glazing at, at 1.2, walls at 0.18, so again 75 mil uh, CWP partial fill or 100 mil uh, full fill cavity therm system, you can get to 0.18. Floors 0.13 typically around about 125 mil PIR. Roofs still at 0.11, so 400 mil if it's a, a plain ceiling. Thermal bridging at 0 0.05, so we'll discuss Y values in a, in a little bit more detail and what they mean. Air tightness again remains constant at five. They're still on a on a gas boiler, and again, we're not quite ready from a manufacturing industry point of view to, to, to make that switch. So again, it's part of the transitional process. Uh, wastewater heat recovery systems, so again, a um, bit of a weird one. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with wastewater heat recovery, vertical or horizontal units, um, typically in this case, taking the waste from the shower. Um, Using using that heat to, to heat um, as 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 the water goes back into the system. Um, so again, no moving parts, no maintenance sits there for the lifetime of the fabric. Possibly, you know, could be could be seen as a fabric um, thing rather than a renewable. But um, again, achieve very very good uh, results within SAP. And then they've got a photovoltaic panels, which is 0.6 of a kilowatt uh, for every 40 square meters of, of floor area. And that's again looking at compliance for 2021. So why why a stepping stone? And I think it really outlines it there. While providing industry with the time it needs to develop the supply chains and skills that will be necessary to deliver the future home standards and accounting for market factors. So it's again making the industry ready. But from a from a design point of view, which the majority or everyone on this call uh, hopefully is from that point of view. We, we go back to Grant Schlapp's um, outline approach for delivering zero carbon homes by 2016. And again, this was published back in July 2010. It's we, We've done all of this as architects and designers. You've gone through the code of sustainable homes levels five and six. You know, you, you kind of know quite a lot about the design. Um, we, we were particularly involved in the AMC4 project um, which were again looking at delivering performance standards higher than ever before and higher than the future home standards. Uh, we did that with Cress Nicholson and Barrett Homes. Uh, Stuart Milne were also part of that, but did that with Timber Frame. Did that back in 2011, and I think the first um, set of those houses was delivered in 2012. And again, it was looking at all of this and looking at actually measuring uh, how they performed post completion, sort of thing. It, it, as designers, we're there. Um, it's just making sure that the manufacturing industry and you know things like air source heat pumps are available to us, and they, they will gear themselves up for it um, as, as we get closer to the time. But just looking at this from the Guardian, so they're saying buyers of brand new homes face a twenty thousand bill to make make them greener. So that, that's looking at twenty twenty five as well. Um, again, with the existing housing stock of some twenty five plus million houses. The, the longer and longer that we go on uh, delivering houses to the standards that we are, the, the more and more problem we, we're going to have um, to, de to de decarbonize these houses by 2050 is, is going to cost as huge measures that go into it. It's, you know, you look at things that are, that are simple or you think were simple, like a floor, um, you know, adding an extra 25 mil of, or 50 mil of, of flooring um, in insulation isn't the biggest deal in the world a lot of the time, um, you know, with ground conditions and stuff like that can there can be additional cost but how are you going to do it in the future you've got a concrete slab say you've got dpm insulation separating layer maybe 65 or 75 mil sand and cement screed what are you going to do to improve that you know finished floor levels are set you've got door heights you've got part m compliance for sockets and stuff 
it's all set. You know, you can put a slightly better insulation in maybe and a slightly thinner, thinner screen, but it's a, there's huge cost that's attached to things like that. Um, external walls can, can be tricky. Externally, planning issues potentially. Internally, adding stuff, you know, as well as M&E and reveals and stuff, you've, you've lost floor area. And, and we all allow the floor area, the gross internal floor area, to be a metric of how we measure the, the, the sale price of a house. Um, that it goes beyond that when you start talking about finishes, but typically it's what's the square footage of that house and what's what's relevant around that house to, to, to be a comparable and stuff. So we're decreasing the value by, by adding thermal liners on the inside face or battening off with insulation between. So again, it's it's really just highlighting we should be thinking about this sooner and addressing this sooner for future future generations to come. And again, like I said, that's twenty thousand pounds based on twenty twenty five, let alone going further. So again, just uh, looking at the future home standards and going back to to where we were with zero carbon homes two thousand thirteen, two thousand twenty one, and then two thousand twenty five. Just the compliances through through the notional dwellings. So again, you can see on the floors point one three to point one one, very similar, and a really just a twenty five mil increment of insulation. Um, external walls then at point one eight to point one five. Very similar again, we touched on it earlier, the difference of CWP and, and cavity therm, just being again 25 mil increment. Um, the roof 0.13 to 0.11 mineral fiber, again, not a great deal of difference. Well, there's going to be enough of a difference, but really in cost, there's not, not too much of a difference. Uh, window U values uh, 1.4, 1.2, that's double glazing, very standard industry. Um, U values down to point, point 0.8. So again, going down to that triple glazing, um, additional pane of glass, adding more embodied carbon, and it is there. So door values pretty much remaining constant at, at one, air permeability constant at five, gas boilers all the way through till 2025, where you have to use the low carbon heating systems. So again, typically air source heat pumps. So ventilation standard throughout. PV comes in and out. Uh, throughout throughout the uh, metrics. Wastewater heat recovery just makes an appearance in, in 2021 then disappears. Um, makes me look a little bit more skeptical on it because um, it does it does appear to be very, very good in SAP 10. Um, but again, some, sometimes things can be better or appear to be better than they are, if you like. Um, I don't want to I don't want to touch too much on the, the wastewater heat recovery. I'll let other people do that. And then the Y value at 0 0.05 again, thermal bridging remaining constant throughout. So looking at the proposed changes, um, we've got the fabric energy efficiency that actually stays with us. The primary energy rate, which has been newly introduced. Uh, thermal bridging, we've had two additional um, thermal bridges, making 44 in total um, on table K1. But they've, they've removed the approved details, so you've just got the default details in that. So there's more ventilation uh, details that need to be added. Lighting, so this will be something that comes up as as, as SAP probably, SAP 10 probably comes out and we start looking at projects that are going to be covered under that. It's no longer 75% minimum low E lighting and everyone ticks the box of 100. It's actually understanding each fitting, um, the wattage, the luminaire output. So there is more details there. Water's similar. It's no longer just ticking a box of 125 litres per day per person. Again, it goes into a little bit more detail about numbers, numbers of baths and showers that have to be inputted in. So again, people will ask those questions, but you've, you've typically shown them on um, on the drawings that you presented to your energy assessor anyway. So low low carbon uh, factors in SAP will change the heating design. So we've we've looked at that. The proposed changes of more than half the CO2 emission factors for electricity. And again, there's been a lot of good work going back into the grid um, with clean technologies such, such as offshore wind farms. So again, making electricity better as we know it is. Um, but obviously in SAP 12, it's not considered that which goes on there, SAP, SAP assumes that the electricity produces 2.4 times more carbon emissions than mains gas. Uh, so that's why it's not currently favorable. But there's a 55% reduction in the CO2 emissions factor for electricity now, meaning that homes are heated by direct electric heating systems will produce virtually the same CO2 emissions as gas, while heat pumps will produce even less. So must say when I've looked at the beta, latest beta version of SAP through Elmhurst um, being SAP qualified uh, myself as well, as, as are all the other specification managers for extra therm. I, find, I found it quite difficult to, to, to achieve compliance with gas, really easy with air source heat pumps. Um, again, there are other things that you can do. We have done gas with blue gas heat recovery and, and wastewater heat recovery as well and, and made them pass, but it is quite challenging. 
Uh, the SAP10 factor is also far lower than the carbon factor produced in 2016. So just looking at the thermal bridging on the right hand side, we've got table K1. So previously that would have um, the approved details as well. Um, but you can use junction details as I say there's four choices. There's not really option D really isn't a choice, but you've got three choices. You use a construction joint detail calculated by suitable competent people um, and the BRE scheme. You can use junction details from non uh, government based government based databases. So LA, LABC, BRE. Um, you can use the values shown in the table on the right hand side, and, and there will be pretty much on most occasions where you will go back to a default detail uh, when nobody's done those calculations, or th there is a default Y value which has gone from 0.15 in the SAT 12 uh, to 0.2 in SAT 10. But if you found somebody using that, I, I, I would encourage you to, to change your energy assessor, I think, because it, it costs a great deal of money to, to make that difference in, in having that penalty there. So just looking at thermal bridge detail, so on the right hand side, we've got one of ours, which is a full fill cavity therm and a ground floor junction detail. Um, and again, about three quarters down on the left hand side, you see a little trident, that's a psi value sign. And the psi value on that detail is 0 0.02. So again, you can get details from people like ourselves. Or you can use people uh, like the BRE. So again, one of our details independently assessed by the BRE is a lintel detail. And again, on the bottom left hand side, you've got the psi value and it's 0 0.023. Um, the default for, for a lintel is, is, is actually 0.3. So you can see there's a significant difference in performance. So just, just looking at the Y value. So I, I want to explain a little bit what they are. We do show here that having a, a, a thermal bridging Y value of 0.2 is the equivalent of having an open garage door at 2.1 by 3.3. But again, I want to explain, I suppose, a little bit more about what they are. So psi values are, uh, are non-repeating thermal bridges. So it's things like corners, jams, heads, uh, sills, eaves junction details, and ridge beams and, and so on. But again, these, these must all be measured. And what they are is they're an accumulation of a penalty. So a Y value should be assumed a Y value is a penalty. So when you have a U value and say you are using 0.2, and you are, you've got a U value of 0.15, so you've done a, a good job on a U value, but your energy assessor is assuming um, a default detail, so poor detailing. That U value becomes 0.35, so it makes a, it makes a huge difference. Um, what I have done in the past is I've, I've actually shown people, so again, maybe at the end, um, if anyone has, or in the future, anyone has any queries, I'm quite happy to, to show people my screen and my Elmhurst um, software, and I'll actually show you the difference between going from 0.2 to something like 0 0.03 and it, it percentage terms it's massive um, so again you can see then the, the more percentage the more cost effectively you're going to have to add to other areas um, but we can we can regularly get down so on a standard two-story house plain roof um, without bay windows and stuff you can get to 0 0.03 using cavity thermal cwp with our side value details um, and just to give you an indication 0 0.01 is classed as passive house so no bridge and, and below is no bridge so again, these must be measured and accounted for. But as, as designers, this is this is the most difficult thing for us because whilst I'm sat here saying this is what we should do, and ev everyone I think was probably in agreement that this is what we should be doing, but it's what do you aim for? And I think everyone aims to try and do more, and then it gets you know whether it's a contractor or a client, they always come back and look to value engineer. What can we do? Oh, let's take some insulation out. That we only have to achieve these regulations. Nobody's thinking about the future, so it's a really really challenging job. So you've got Part L, future home standards. The Rebut Climate Challenge, NZ, Passive House. But looking looking at the Rebut Climate Challenge, so this was introduced in, in June 2019, and it was it was basically voted for after um, or voted to join a global declaration of environmental and climate emergency. But this, this was two days after the UK government passed law um, in the UK to end its contribution to global warming by 2050 uh, by bringing all greenhouse gases to net zero carbon. And again, it, it, it really is again going through what i'm saying we must act now ensuring that new and retrofit buildings uh, deliver net zero whole life carbon in advance of any future regulations it really is that important um you know why put off till tomorrow what can be done today uh, relating back to the costs um, from the guardian and stuff it really is a challenge and again they're, they're thinking um the riba reba uh, thinking of making it uh, secondary mandatory competence so again that comes directly from them but just to look at this, so the, the Reba Climate Challenge was actually um, amended on the 18th of June. Um, so this is the latest uh, version of it. It, it covers it, it covers uh, three main areas. Um, 
but there are three other focus areas in health and well-being, biodiversity and delivery. So we, we look at um, start at three potable water. So again, I talked to the 125 litres per day per person, uh, which is where we are now. They're looking to reduce that to 75 litres um, by 2030. So I, I'm not going to go into any any detail on that because it's not something that we'll cover using the installation, but it is a metric there. The embodied carbon where we do influence, again, uh, typically now about 1,200, going down to 625. So again, looking at that whole life. So before, the reg before they changed their, their metrics here, they were looking at targeting below 300. So we've done a significant amount of work um, ourselves looking at the embodied carbon of, of our products and processes um, alongside masonry and, and other types of construction just to make sure we could be compliant with that. So we are we are looking um, at, at, in August um, effectively of having our own CPD um, based on the embodied carbon uh, and a white paper to go with that as well. So again, um, hopefully I can deliver that to, to yourselves and, and uh, see that as well. And then operational energy again, which we which we which remains the same, so less than 35 kilowatts per hour per meter squared uh, uh, divided by the year across the year. Again, that that's remained constant, and of course, the better you make the fabric, um, the the lower the um, operational energy that goes into it. So again, the op the operational energy. Um, Measurement of a building can be taken from confirmed energy bills or advanced metering systems. Uh, so we can do that during design stage and we use things like SAP um, to estimate the demand uh, to meet the Rebut Climate Challenge 2030 of 35 uh, kilowatts per um, square meter per year. In the absence of confirmed values as a guide, the space heating uh, should only be approximately 15 kilowatts per hour per meter square per year. Um, and again, that's passive house standard, um, and this is sourced from the Reba Sustainable Outcomes uh, Guide. So embodied carbon is becoming more and more important. It's not um, in the, the part of our regulations as a target, but it's very, very clear that um, it's going to be. Um, that Reba have prompted that, and other people like Letty and I know Seattle are also doing their own um, papers. So you've got here the Environment Audit Committee um, on the 17th of February of this year recommends that the government include um, and introduce embodied carbon uh, targets for the construction of new homes and a VAT reduction for retrofits and incentives uh, for green home upgrades. So look, looking at the embodied carbon, looking at the table, it does measure the whole life, but you can see that 51 percent of, of that the entire embodied carbon comes before practical completion. So sourcing and, and looking at how things are done are critical. Um, and again, you can go on to make the fabric better, reduce um, reduce emissions. And I, I touched on the whole life carbon stuff. So when you look at things um, like PV, again, they're replaced twice over the whole life expectancy, which as a, as a residential dwelling is 60 years, but you have to replace that twice. And uh, you know, I, I don't honestly believe that that's necessarily going to get done by the homeowner. Um, that they probably won't live there for, for that 60 years, so they probably won't have to replace it twice. But they possibly won't. will have to do it once. And I just I just don't think it, I just don't think it can happen. Um, so again, addressing the fabric first, make, making sure that that building provides um, compliance for its lifetime uh, is, is very important indeed. So again, looking at the measurement of embodied carbon, um, so it's based on providing environmental product declarations, so EPDs, um, most like third party verified uh, can be used in the audit processes of the total buildings and they're internationally recognised as a document which demonstrates the environmental performance of a product. So again, these are going to be replacing the BRE's Green Guide, um, that's being phased out by the end of the year under BRIAM. And, and again, it's a way for, for you as designers, my thought process, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, um, and Gail, sorry, um, basically uh, you start a performance. What, what, what do I need to achieve this U value say? And what's the, what's the performance product I need? Then you look at the, the commercial aspect, is it affordable, which, which becomes primor primarily the number one focus. So you've got those two metrics, which we've always followed. And then we now have sustainability. Is the product a sustainable product that can be used um, within within our build? Um, so again, we have that information available to you. And again, um, we've got a separate CBD um, becoming available on this itself. 
So just looking at specifications, and you can see from the specification of Part L, the Future Home Standards and the Climate Challenge 2030, all can be met within a very similar specification. So again, SAP is a recipe after all, um, and, and you can put certain things in to outweigh them on certain other areas. But it's only under the REBIT Climate Challenge that embodied uh, carbon content has been addressed. So again, on the right hand side, it's just one of the house types that we've modeled. So we've done our own notional dwellings, if you like, looking at, uh, looking at compliance. So just looking at ways of achieving new values, uh, 0.18, so brick and block, trying to keep within 150 mil overall cavity for engineering and, and um, design, so designing of additional wall ties, trying to keep within that, because it does make a massive difference when you go above 150 mil in thermal bridging. So again, phenolic foam, um, quite easily achieving 0.18. Standard PIR, again, makes, makes the cut. Uh, our full fill, so we've got cavity therm, can get as low as 0.12 uh, with, a, with a lightweight block of 0.15 and below. But again, 100 mil cavity therm um, with a lightweight block or 110 mil with a dense block will achieve 0.18. Uh, full fill mineral fibres, again, starting to struggle. The blown fibres, the pump beads, um, it does become more and more of a challenge. And obviously exposure zones also challenges full fill um, subject to part, part C. Timber frame, numerous ways, again, um, of achieving that. So again, putting a very um, poorly graded fibre between the stud, I guess, and a thermal liner whether that's PIR or phenolic foam, depending on um, the outside finish as well, whether there's a requirement for fire. Again, you're looking at quite thick wall constructions. Again, we should always look at uh, reducing that to add value. Steel frame, so looking at a non-combustible solution, apartment blocks typically, I don't see too many steel frame houses, albeit I have, I have come across a few. Again, we've got a Euro class A1 non-combustible um, stone wall, so at 200 mil thick. Um, we can achieve a U value of 0.18. So again, you end up with quite a thick wall. Uh, quite a time consuming job. Um, looking at running calculations. So I, I can run a U value calculation on a standard external wall in about 30 to 45 seconds, probably. With a steel frame, it takes about 20 minutes. There's a lot of detailing that goes in around thermal bridging because you've got the helping hand brackets, you've got the SFS itself. It is a time consuming job. Um, so again, if you, you guys do come on to the technical and, and over the phone, because we're quite happy to run calculations for you over the phone, um, they, they will uh, take the details off a steel frame for you and, and get them across to you, whereas they'll do the other calculations with you over the phone, because um, they're relatively easy in comparison. So again, just to, just to bring a conclusion to the presentation, again, we, we've gone through the overview um, of the Part L following the consultation. We've delivered the timetable, looked at additional areas of focus. Um, looked at the specification for 2021, stepping stone, uh, gone into detail on the 2025, including the specification. A little bit on embodied carbon. Like I said, we have a, a separate CPD available for that one in, in August. Um, and then done the comparison uh, going, going forward, looking at zero carbon uh, to present uh, to the present. And again, my, my own conclusion is we really, really need to, to address the fabric and make sure that's right for the lifetime of the building, because that's typically what sits there for the true lifetime. So again, we have uh, sort of my details here. So again, if, if anyone wants a copy um, of the presentation or wants further information or wants uh, us to look at a project and, and assist them on, on anything, then please do get in contact with myself or, or our technical team um, on, on the below numbers or emails. Uh, and we'd be more than happy to help. And I must admit that's the quickest I've ever delivered it. Um, so hopefully you've all enjoyed that and I'm happy now to revert back and answer any questions. Great, thank you Martin. That was really in, uh, in depth, insightful and interesting um, for various reasons. Um, we went through, uh, thank you for going through it so quickly. Obviously everyone can probably appreciate that you've gone through a lot of detail, um, not only going back and sort of highlighting the way in which standards have been um, promised to be upgraded, um, but also where we're looking to go be going um, with standards in the very near future, as long as they don't go about turn on that. Um, mm -hmm. And then <laughs> and then also we've got a really interesting specific um, products that extra therm have that particularly look to address various uh, elements. And I don't know whether everyone's aware, but extra therm um, particularly go quite you know, go quite along the way in regard to making sure that the calculations that are produced are in quite a lot of detail um, to make sure that they're covering sort of thermal bridging and so on. Um, 
I know that someone's asked about um, whether you guys have U value calculators. And as far as I understand, you do. You have a couple of options, don't you? You have the Y calculator we, and the downloadable one we, or something? We, we do, we do. I, I, must, I must admit, we, we don't look favorably uh, on online U value calculators. And the reason for that typically is, so we do have one and it's quite a complicated um, system. So I, I, I would suggest it's probably easier to contact me or the technical office. But the reason that we don't like the default U value calculators and ours isn't a default one is there's so much information that goes into it is you don't get an accurate U value which can't be used. So, you know, you print off one and it'll always state that you have to go back to the manufacturer to get actual confirmation. It's, and it's because it uses all the defaults. So what you quite regularly find is you actually better what's been done. I, I know they're a very quick guide for you um, to say, right, I think I need to use something around this. And that's where they're perhaps a go to. But I think with the service that we offer, we offer a, 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 we have to operate within a 24 hour service, but that's normally on the more technical stuff like um, tapered roof systems. But typically, if you phone me up or phone technical, you'd have a response straight away. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's just just making sure that we follow that process rather than try and deliver stuff that's not accurate. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, uh, I, th I think I've located those anyway. So are you happy with me to share those on the oh, on the group? No, chat? Of, of course, of course. Then no, that's no, it's no okay, problem so, at all. So that's that. And then, it, did you mean as in literally email yourself if um, you want you, to talk about your yes. values, or is it? Yeah, no, for sure. So, so I'm I'm happy. So, what technical will do typically um, is they'll give you what you want. Whereas, what I'll do is I'll look through with you, um, and we'll talk through options um, which might be more suitable. So, you 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 typically would have a good idea of what you want um, already. Then go to technical if you want some more information looking specifically at thermal bridging details or a detail that's not covered under the thermal bridging is quite a popular one of what should we do here that's best practice. Um, then again, I'm happy to look through the detailing and assist you uh, from there. But we will also put in place when we do work with um, you specifically, is we'll also put in place project support. So that comes through our commercial team. And again, whether that's availability, pricing, um, gen general toolbox talk, if it's a product that hasn't been used before, then we just follow that process up to the end effectively. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, and then um, I'm just going to go through the questions, but um, uh, someone's asked about whether this presentation will be made available um, at a later date. Yes, it was. it's being recorded at the moment and it will be added to um, SIAT's uh, YouTube page. So keep an eye out for it to be added on there. Um, we can't confirm when that will be, um, but it will be added on onto that um, site in due course. Um, so sorry, Martin, coming back to a question for yourself is uh, will in installation manufacturers bring out higher performing thinner boards? Otherwise, wall thickness, et cetera, will have to increase roof floors, et cetera. So that's just a question. So uh, whether whether they do increase um, beyond 150 mil, I don't necessarily see the need with, with the information that we have available to us at the moment. So we, we have a new range coming out, um, which I, I can't go into a massive amount of detail through. But in the autumn, we will be launching a new eco range. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be available, but the U values of where we are around about the, you know, I know Kingspan do 0 0.018, but around about the 0 0.020 um, up to 0 0.022, which is more of an industry standard. We're not going to look to improve that drastically. We have uh, both us and another have, or, and, and more probably have products uh, which are vacuum packed, um, which have a conductivity of 0 0.007. Um, which which is fantastic in, in principle. They they cost they cost a great deal, but in my view, they're they're a product to get over um, possibly bad detailing. Um, so they they're used uh, typically on uh, terraces and balconies where you've got threshold details um, that become an issue. Um, but again, they're, they're they're more getting over the problem of of not having a team that's communicating properly. I know that that's not always the case, but the majority of what I see is 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 communication between an architect and engineer. And, and somebody like ourselves in the energy assessor not communicating properly at the right stages. But in, in all honesty, there's there's not going to be a product that's, as, as far as I know, that's going to come out to the industry with, with the knowledge that I have currently that's going to drastically improve it. But looking, looking at where the regulations are going and certainly sort of looking at uh, 2025 there, where, where we've looked for compliance still at 0.18 in an external wall, then we're doing that within 100 mil cavity, so uh, 300 mil overall. Um, so going up to the 150 mil and being able to get to a U value of 0 0.12, um, I don't see them going too far beyond that um, because yeah. it becomes about the detailing. The, the poorer the detail around the U value, the more it's like having a hole in a balloon and squeezing it. So the better you make the U value, the more apparent the thermal bridging is. 
So the one thing I would say is if we if we address a, a reasonable U value with very good thermal bridging, then that will address uh, most of the issues going forward from a from a U value point of view. Compliance. Um, so um, we've got another question, which is um, uh, I'm not sure about the abbreviation, but lack of confidence in HMG considering carbon neutral was due to be implemented in 2016. Mm. Yep. So obviously, that that the government hadn't fully committed to that, and I think the national house builders and stuff probably had quite a big say in in that not actually happening. If if we if we are talking about the zero carbon or zero carbon homes and and everything else. So again, this is a commitment that the government government's made to, and they will be significantly fined um, when and if they don't achieve it. So I I, I have confidence in that happening personally. Okay. Great. Um, and, 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 then, and sorry, just to start, on, no, on that, no, no, one, go, go. A, a lot of local authorities. So Bristol is is one that we're obviously we're in. Um, but you've got uh, Hampshire, Winchester, Eastleigh, West Berkshire, the London boroughs. They're all targeting 2030, so they're they're getting ahead of the government. So you will see Bristol's um, CO2 reduction target at the moment is 20% over building regulations. So yeah. London boroughs are 35%. So they are they are targeting and knowing that they have to do it before the government actually does it themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we've got, um, I guess it's tagged on to the same, uh, how realistic is the implementation, implementation as Partel over the years constantly, is constantly being pushed back uh, as it is unachievable for one reason or another. So excuses are given, so it pushes yeah. it back. But, but again, while still being recorded, it's a difficult one. My, 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 my main view, I suppose, in my own personal view, is, is we have influences from national house builders. Um, and, and house pricing and everything else. And, and they'll be the ones that are trying not to add any additional cost um, and, and stuff. But I think the, the word climate emergency, global crisis, um, it, it, it is big. Sustainability has been driven now by the public and that's what we need um, to make the national house builders do this. If, if, if they're saying, for instance, I touched on loft space and storage, if, if, if they ask for it, then they will have to deliver it. Mm -hmm. um, so again, um, I, I'm I'm sure that we'll we'll end up with Part L 2021 in 2022. I'm, I'm sure, as 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 much as I can be, that they'll be somewhere near 2025 delivering the future home standards, and and obviously with the fining that's going to go on around about 2050, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure they'll be there and thereabouts from that point as well. Yeah, great. Um, someone's asked about whether the C, uh, the um, uh, software is available for Macs, but I presume that's obviously if it's not on the website, then contact your, you you directly it, or technical or, directly to run um, the calculations for you. I think so. Yeah, if 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 it's not available, then we we need to come through ourselves mm -hmm. um, for running those calculations. But I must stress, it's 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 a minefield when you look at things like the BR four four three, which is the conventions for producing U values. It's not as simple as, as as you can imagine, unless you know the information and understand that document, and you can't make that all run for a U value calculation tool anyway. So I, I would always stress it's far easier to come to to me or or our technical to have those calculations run, um, condensation risk assessments done at the same time, and, and the advice. It's, um, it's just to be clear as well, what would you require to be sent across? Is it DWGs? Is it PDFs? Is it so, um, just just so everyone's clear what you it can you be need. It, it can be very simple so typically if we if we look at um, ground floors let's start with nice simple ground floors a p over a so perimeter area so I'm happy to accept that as a drawing and do it ourselves an understanding of the substructure is it a ground bearing slab 150 mil um, I know where the DP well, uh, say where the DPM is going but if it's 150 mil slab 100 mil insulation and a 65 mil screed the DPM is going to go in between the, the slab and the insulation but typically that level of information from a from a ground floor basements are, are a lot more complicated. Um, you need yeah. to know um, the external wall value of the, the basement, um, the difference between the ground floor um, finished external level and, and the finished floor level of, of the proposed. So there, there's a lot more detail on that. Um, external walls can be simple. Um, again, brick outer skin, 50 mil cavity, 100 mil insulation and a, and a dense in a block with the dot and dab plasterboard and the skin finish. Again, so the, typically the more information you give, the better, but they're, they're fairly simple. Uh, and roofs, again, the, the tile slate makes no difference at all. Um, batten, breather membrane, um, 
size of the rafter, the insulation, or not necessarily the insulation post, the size size of the rafters, centers of the rafters, and again, the finish to the underside and target U values. But again, we can do that with drawings. We can view DWGs, no problem, PDFs. Um, we can talk about it over the phone. Um, again, it's all about making life easy. The easier I can make life for you, the less resistance there is to doing it again. And that's ultimately what we want to do. So. OK, great. Um, I think I'll bring it to a close there, but obviously I'd like to thank Martin uh, from Extratherm for um, uh, uh, taking part in, a, in our series of CPD in 43. I'd like to thank you, our colleagues in, um, uh, the, our, in our sister committee in Wales, uh, particularly Barry Williams, um, uh, and also the, the rest of the committee. Um, also, uh, if you, if anyone would like to get involved with any of the committees, please do get in touch with either ourselves in the Wessex region, in the Wales region, or any other respective region. I'm more than happy to have people get involved. And uh, just generally, um, thank you again from Martin. Please do have a look on, on the Eventbrite page. We do have a couple of more events coming up, which is one from New Lock, which again, we're going to be running with um, SI at Wales and also another, which is Newton Waterproofing, um, which you can see on the screen there. So one's on Wednesday, the 7th of July, and the next one's on Wednesday, the 14th of July. So it'd be great to see you all there. Um, thank you, everyone. And thank you again, Martin. Um, goodbye, everybody. Brilliant. Thank you.